And a very good morning to distinguished delegates. Uh, and at the outset, may I thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me this opportunity to speak at this stage. I have to leave Geneva uh, shortly on mission, so uh, thank you for the indulgence of allowing me to speak at the start of the meeting to address uh, a number of issues, but in particular the presentation of the draft program budget for the 2018-2019 biennium. Uh, and may I say, Madam Chair, uh, how delighted we are to see you in the chair. Uh, so uh, let me start before moving to the draft program and budget on uh, the results uh, so far in the current biennium, recalling that we're now at uh, 18 months into the current biennium, biennium of 19 of 2016, 2017. So as you are aware, the uh, results of the first year were very good. We ended the year with an overall uh, financial result of uh, a surplus of 32 million Swiss francs, uh, having taken into account the IPSAS adjustments. Uh, that uh, caused the net assets of the organization to rise to approximately 311 million Swiss francs. And one of the pleasing uh, things about that result uh, is that it enabled us to increase the percentage of the liquid assets in the overall reserves. And as you're aware, uh, there is a target that has been set by the member states to increase the proportion of the liquid, liquid assets in the reserves from 22% to 25%. So this was a, a very good result. Uh, the results, of course, are not just financial, but they cover uh, a number of matters. And as you are aware, there are pro program performance reports before this committee, which go into those. Uh, but we see that uh, about 72% of the uh, program performance indicator targets are well on track at the mid-biennium stage. Uh, this year, of course, <coughs> the results are uh, very much provisional, but what we can say is that we are well on track uh, to repeat the performance of uh, the first year of the biennium, uh, and so we would hope that all things being equal, uh, we would have a result in this year which uh, is similar to the one in which we achieved uh, last, which we achieved last year. Uh, let me turn then, if I may, to the draft program and budget for 2018-2019. Uh, and in financial terms, uh, as you have seen, uh, in terms of the big picture, we are estimating uh, that the revenue of the organisation will rise by some 10.4%. Uh, that would take the overall revenue of the organisation to 826 million Swiss francs. Uh, so it would be the first time that in a biennium uh, the organization achieves re revenue uh, over 800 million Swiss francs. Uh, as you know, those estimates of revenue are based on the work of our chief economist's office uh, in which they track historical and recent historical demand and also the uh, projections of the IMF with respect to GDP uh, in the uh, countries with the heaviest filings uh, with the organization. Uh, over the course of the last uh, four or five biennia, the predictions or the estimates of the Chief Economist's Office have been validated. Uh, so we feel comfortable going forward on that basis. Uh, and, of course, we adopt a conservative view uh, of the uh, pro projections uh, which are done on a high case and a lo low case and a base case. So uh, that is the situation for the revenue. In terms of expenditure, we are proposing to you that expenditure be limited to an increase of 2.7%. So that is below, of course, the estimate, estimated increase in revenue. Uh, and we do that, again, on the basis of uh, an endeavor to address those concerns that are most important to the member states and have been expressed by the member states. Uh, 
significantly, we would uh, contain the rise in staff costs to 0.8%, 0.8%. And that is a concern that has been expressed repeatedly in the meetings of the Program and Budget Committee in previous years, the containment of staff costs, and we think that uh, we have succeeded in doing that in recent years, and we propose uh, to continue that in the uh, new biennium. Uh, there are several things that we uh, are proud of as a record in terms of management in the course of the last several years. The first of those is that we have been able to achieve our results without any fee increase now uh, and going forward to the next uh, biennium, 2018-2019, it would be the fifth successive biennium without a fee increase. And that compares extremely favourably with the record of national and regional uh, intellectual property offices. Uh, we would, uh, we are again not proposing any new posts in the organisation. So I mentioned the objective of the containment of staff costs. Uh, and here is again a concrete example of it, and again it's the fifth successive biennium in which we have been able to uh, uh, not request new posts in the organisation. And this is a consequence of, uh, first of all, the increased productivity that is brought about by our IT systems uh, that underlie the global systems of the PCT, the Madrid, uh, the Hague and other areas and it's brought about, we believe, by prudent management practices as well. Uh, in going forward, uh, I think a couple of items, if I may uh, mention, um, besides the overall financial uh, situation. The first of those is that we are presenting a capital master plan, a multi-year uh, uh, projection of the capital costs that the organisation will incur in the coming period of 10 years, but of course it's limited to uh, a specific request for the next biennium of 2018-2019. The main areas covered by uh, what we believe to be the coming uh, capital expenditure requirements are safety and security, first of all, both physical security and safety and cyber security. Uh, so these are items in which we believe additional investment is required. We have been do undertaking that additional investment uh, and it is proposed to continue down that track to ensure the safety, physical safety first of all, of uh, the staff and all delegations and all visitors to the organisation, but also the security of our in, uh, information technology systems, which as I have already mentioned, underlie the good performance uh, in our global IP systems. Uh, the second uh, area is investment in our IT platforms themselves. So we have been able to achieve considerable productivity gains uh, as a consequence of our IT platforms. Uh, However, they, as you know, require constant renewal uh, and at the moment we have quite a large number of projects underway in this area within the Secretariat. So uh, there is the continuing improvement uh, of the EPCT environment, the electronic environment for, in which the PCT operates. Uh, there is a proposed renewal of the IT environment for the Madrid system and for the Hague system as well. Um, we are also uh, exploring the extent to which synergies may be obtained through a single global platform for all of our services, all of our global systems, the PCT, Madrid and the Hague, and that proceeds uh, along lines where uh, we wish to present to users of our systems who are, are commonly use all of our systems uh, as opposed to just one single system, a seamless user experience to the extent that this is possible. Uh, we 
uh, also, uh, I have mentioned the investment in cybersecurity. Uh, we are also uh, placing emphasis on our IT platforms, which enable us to uh, improve uh, and contribute to sustainable development programs. So I mention here our IPAS uh, operating system, intellectual property automation system, which is deployed in over 80 uh, developing countries and transition economies ac across the world, which is a very popular program and the demand is extremely high and it requires, again, uh, continuing investment. I would mention also our technology and information support centres in this regard, another area of uh, investment uh, which has a direct uh, impact on our development uh, programme. Uh, perhaps a little footnote, if I may, uh, the organisation was able to achieve a very good outcome with the use of deep neural machine learning uh, for translation uh, this was reported earlier this year. Uh, it's the first application that we have of artificial intelligence. It has produced extremely good results, uh, compare favourably with all systems, uh, any other available system throughout the world. And we believe that now we're on the threshold of uh, more significant uh, artificial intelligence applications within the administration. You will see, for example, that we propose exploring uh, the development of a digital tutor in the academy in terms of human capacity building. Uh, as you are aware, some 60,000 students undertake our uh, distance learning programs every year, and we feel that the, the preliminary results in this area uh, obtained elsewhere have been uh, very promising, and we feel this is an area we should explore at this stage as well. Let me go back to, uh, away from the, uh, the IT uh, uh, investments foreseen in the Capital Master Plan uh, and say that the third area, besides safety and security, IT platforms, the third area of major concern for capital expenditure is the maintenance of the life cycle of our buildings in such a way as to avoid large one-off expenditure requirements for uh, renovation. So maintenance of our campus um, is an important item going forward, which will enable us, we believe, to save significant amounts uh, in the future. Uh, moving away from the capital master plan, uh, if I may, I would like to say a word on our long-term liabilities, uh, of which the most significant is the after-service health insurance uh, item. Uh, that has been a subject of discussion in this committee uh, in previous years and earlier uh, in consultations. Let me just say that we have been funding this liability. We, uh, the funding uh, runs at around about 60% at this stage. Uh, it is an item in which we are participating in a system-wide uh, exercise uh, that is being undertaken in the finance and budget network uh, and in the high-level committee on management. Those exercises in those two committees are still in progress. Uh, no recommendations or decisions have emerged from those processes uh, and those exercises, uh, but I wish to assure you that we are participating fully, watching this very carefully, and will report the results. Uh, and proposals for any appropriate action at the requisite time. Uh, in terms of, uh, I have two other items, I'm taking some time and I apologise for, uh, for that. I have two other items that uh, I should like to cover very briefly, if I may. Uh, one is general programme items. Uh, so on general programme items, I'm not going to go into any detail. You'll have the opportunity to meet with each of the programme managers and to go into the details. But I would like to say that uh, we have taken care to ensure that the sustainable development goals uh, and the development agenda are guiding principles for the development of the programme, and these are reflected in the results framework that is before you. 
Uh, I would also signal that, uh, of course, the Member States have been discussing the question of the identification of external officers. Uh, one for the current biennium and up to three for the next biennium. Uh, we are aware that, uh, as reported to us at this stage, no agreement has been reached. From a budgetary point of view, of course, this is relatively straightforward. Uh, we have made provision for the four officers from a budgetary point of view. It's a question now of the Member States identifying which are the four officers uh, with which you would like to go forward. <coughs> uh, my last point then would be to mention the decision, uh, recent decision of the International Civil Service Commission to adjust the post multiplier for Geneva downwards by some 7.7%. Uh, this, as many of you are aware, has been the subject of widespread discussion, particularly in Geneva, which is the duty station affected by that particular decision. Uh, as you are aware, uh, the Geneva-based agencies have undertaken a collective exercise of due diligence with respect to the decision of the ICSC in, uh, going, uh, in assessing the question of the application of that decision. That exercise of due diligence is something that is mandated in our understanding by the jurisprudence of the ILO Tribunal uh, that uh, councils that executive heads should not blindly apply the decisions of the ICSC but have a duty of due diligence to ensure that the decision is taken upon correct grounds. Uh, a, as I said, a collective exercise has been undertaken by all of the agencies uh, and a submission has been made by all of the Geneva-based agencies to the ICSC, which meets in Vienna uh, next week. Um, next week, if I'm not mistaken, this week. This week, sorry, this week. Uh, and we'll be considering this item uh, most likely on Thursday and Friday. Now, the uh, collective review that has been undertaken has indicated, uh, has uh, revealed what we believe to be a number of significant flaws in both the methodology and the application of the methodology, as well as data collection in the, which underlied, underlay the ICSC decision. Uh, so we are waiting to see uh, whether the meeting of the ICSC, and we have of course been in constant dialogue with the ICSC about these matters, we are waiting to see whether the meeting of the ICSC confirms its decision, modifies its decision, or uh, does what has been suggested uh, to them, redoes their, uh, sur redo their survey and uh, apply the methodology in what we would believe to be a correct manner. Now, some of you are asking uh, what the impact of the decision that will be made by the ICSC would be. Uh, and since there is a certain amount of uncertainty in respect of that decision because of what we believe, after an extremely thorough exercise, are significant methodological flaws. Uh, because of that, uh, what we would suggest is we give you the amount that would be uh, of the proposed uh, expenditure that would be in question, and that amount is 183 million Swiss francs, which represents the uh, salary uh, amount of the P, D, and E categories of staff who would be affected by the decision. Thereafter, you can apply simply 7.7 per cent to that 183, or you can apply 5 per cent or 10 per cent or 2 per cent, as you might see, uh, and you will have the result of uh, what the impact of the decision or any modification of that decision uh, would be. 
So, uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much uh, once again for the opportunity to uh, say these words at the outset, and I wish you uh, very successful deliberations.